<laughs> all right, and welcome back, everyone. So something I like doing for all my tabletop games, especially Star Trek Adventures, is having a open mon opening monologue as read or prepared by my players. And for Star Trek, that means something like a captain's log. So tonight, uh, that honor falls to Mr. Lovecraftian. So Mr. Lee Tobin, if you would take it away. Lieutenant Commander Lee's personal log, Stardate 87850.5. The extensive refits to the Fenrir sensor arrays have been completed in record time. The miracles that Starfleet's Corps of Engineers can accomplish when pressed for time never cease to amaze. And make no mistake, we are pressed for time, beset by temporal shenanigans. According to the copy of the temporal accords, which Maddock, Vassar, and I apparently sent to ourselves from the future, we're at the cusp of ratifying them. Why would we have sent them to ourselves now, at this moment? What are we missing? Of greater concern, however, the Borg have appeared at Daedalus Station, requesting Starfleet's aid. Apparently, they've been experimenting with a dangerously unstable molecule that Starfleet has dubbed Omega, and those experiments have gone awry. The crew has been pulling triple shifts, refitting the ship's engines, and performing the calculations necessary to use the light speed breakaway factor and the basic formula I developed by Ambassador Spock and Captain Sulu to transport the Fenrir, Nalor, and a unnamed Borg sphere through time. If we are successful, one of 13, a Borg representative, will open a transwarp conduit to the Delta Quadrant so that we can prevent the Omega Wave cascading variance in the time space continuum that at this very moment is unraveling hundreds, if not thousands, of light years of subspace. <sighs> Daedalus, unwittingly sending his son to die on waxen wings. The human prophet mouthing the words of his God, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Fenrir, Slayer of the King of the Gods. Humans do adore their mythological appropriations. Staring out at the wreckage disgorged by the Borg transwarp portal, I can't help but feel that it's pretentious. Despite the dire situation, I find myself distracted. I've tried to help Ensign Jensen, but I don't think that I didn't. Stepping into a sick bay again. Computer, pause. Delete the last three lines. Resume. However small a comfort it may be, I feel that I may have offered some solace to Ensign Jensen, who responded positively when we discussed the grace of the prophets. I hope that one day they can help him. May they help us all. And log. And because I smiled more than once, you may have one momentum to start off with for that wonderful nice. opening log. That's so good. All right. So. Applause, applause. applause. Yeah. So uh, pretty much as stated, uh, we are going to start with a senior staff meeting because there's a lot of things to discuss here. Not only the logistics of uh, traveling back in time, but any sort of uh, scenarios once you apparently get to the space in question. Uh, so you guys can go ahead and start. I just got to rejoin on my player scenario, but you guys can start the senior staff meeting. Uh, so <laughs> I'm assuming everyone's there. Yes. So okay. Rast is there. Captain Archuleta is there. Williams is there. Vassar is there. Lee Tobin is there. Maddox is there. Mm -hmm. um, the one character who is not there is one of 13, unless you want him there. So, Bree would have transported uh, the Borg to the brig. Okay. Um, because the way that this all happened seems kind of trap-like to her. Mm -hmm. So she would have kept him there until they could have devised a plan of their own. Noted. So, uh, I'm assuming he's just hanging out there. Okay. So, if we need him, we'll call him. So she's going to, I guess, does she have a copy of these accords yes have you given one to her okay and her signature is on it yes she's gonna kind of look at it and be like well i really need to work on that <laughs> that signature and then she's gonna set it down and be like okay run this by me one more time mr maddock okay so general premise of the idea is using the trinary star system that we are in it'll allow us 
uh, and then the other two ships to accompany us into a time jump uh, into the past. Uh, my best bet, we could probably shoot for probably four to five days prior. That should give us about a day's time to get to um, where the event horizon, I guess is the best way to put it, would be where the event would occur. Um, that would allow one of 13 to either convince his people to allow us to stop them um, or it would allow, and it would also allow uh, us leeway in the time frame of being able to actually accomplish this as opposed to just hopping there, trying to destroy it as it's exploding because it's not fun. Um, on a sidebar, something else that Commander Rast and I considered was uh, if we could get the board to uh, make this work, <clears throat> I could understand the Daystrom Institute's um, agreement to uh, a tactical acquisition of enemy assets. Want to steal the Omega particle? We're tactically acquiring it. By any means necessary. Right. Captain, if I may interject for a moment. Sure. The Omega directive is quite clear in this case. Any Omega particle has to be destroyed. It is... <laughs> It supersedes Starfleet General Order Number One, the Prime Directive itself. The Omega Particle has to be destroyed, regardless of the cost. Some things are too dangerous for us to tamper with. It could spell the end of all warp-faring civilization in the galaxy. I'm afraid I must concur with my esteemed colleague. Yeah, I agree. We're definitely going to have to neutralize it. The question is, how do we do that, especially with the Borg right by us? <laughs> I mean, if we can go back sufficiently into the past, we may be able to contaminate the boronite ore used to synthesize the molecule to the point where it will become unusable. Do we know how big of a particle this is? How much boronite would they need to cause a threat of this nature? Well, let's make a roll of it. Uh, so uh, I would say who, who would be the best to do this roll? I would think either Lee, Vassar, or Matic. Uh, I, any of you can make this roll. Uh, only one of you can assist. Uh, and this is just going to be a simple reason science. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of... Well, let's make it a difficulty zero. Okay. Would I have... theoretical physics contribute to that? It most definitely would. I also have augmented ability reason, so that would be an automatic one success. It would indeed. Uh, just keep in mind that uh, your complication range is increased when you use it. Okay. Would I be able to assist in this role? Yes, you could. So I'll go reason science. Okay. And the SAR will assist. Sounds like a plan. Do we want to spend our one momentum to get a free dice to try to get extra momentum off the bat? Considering that the Omega Particle disrupts subspace, would my subspace dynamics of focus apply here? I would allow it, yes. Okay. So, 3D20 uh, with uh, momentum? Sounds right. Okay. Look at that. Total of four <laughs> momentum for nice. you guys. Wow, thank you. <clears throat> Very nice. Amazing. So what you would know is that in order to create a few molecules, you really only need a handful of the boronite ore. Um, but if you were to get, say, a few kilos of the stuff, you could potentially create enough to create thousands or maybe even millions if you were really, really careful with the manufacturing process. Um. The species in the Delta Quadrant that actually made the uh, that made the molecules and made them stable, mm -hmm. how publicly accessible is that information to us at least? Like, would we know, like, hey, there is a civilization that has done it, 
Borg probably has access to this information also kind of thing, or? I think this would be somewhat of a revision to the Omega Directive, and assuming the captain would have done so, um, they Archuleta probably has given you all the updated Omega protocols, um, specifically because Voyager was able to stabilize the molecules and, you know, learn a way to con potentially contain Omega. We do have the resonance frequency calibrated to contain the particles. However, if you believe the Borg, six seconds is the record for such sustainability. And that's six seconds with the processing power of the entire collective. Is it the entire collective? Or is it Unless this they would one have had sphere. a new queen. Yeah, or well you have to go with the, we have to go with the assumption there had to have been other ships just due to the amount of debris that was released from the trans warp. Mm, uh, okay. Yeah. I bet that it exploded, it started destroying everything, destroyed their cube, and then the sphere transwarped <clears throat> to where we are. Um so can I do a quick little backtrack? Mm -hmm. Um can I get with either Dag or or uh Lee? and get one of them to uh, have done a composite scan of the debris to see if there was anything Starfleet related. Sure. Uh, I would say either Vassar or Lee. Why don't we have Dag lead this one? So Vassar, uh, let's have you roll a reason <laughs> science. And uh, the difficulty on this is a one. And the ship is going to assist you with sensor science. But because you have advanced sensor suites now, the difficulty becomes another zero. Yay, ship yeah. talents in action. Someone rolling for the ship. I think you just volunteered, Captain. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Roll, what was roll, it again? Roll good. Uh, it is Would a sensor. Quantum mechanics or theoretical physics apply in this case? Uh, I'll give you both. Uh, Watney, it is a sensor science for the ship. All right, so that is three successes from Vassar, nothing from the ship. So you have max momentum with one floating momentum you can use to ask me an additional question. Uh, so Vassar, you've scanned the wreckage of the uh, Borg debris. And what you find is that there are no Starfleet uh, signatures, but there are some, shall we say, Alpha and Beta Quadrant species mixed in. But it's not like they have freshly assimilated anyone, if that makes any sense. Just as Captain. a suggestion. Sorry. Captain, it would appear that the Borg wreckage contains technology amalgamated from Alpha and Beta Quadrant species. Well, that's what the Borg do. So do we have the coordinates both physical and temporal for where this event occurred. I believe our prisoner has that information. I bet he would also know how they acquired all of the ore to make this and where they acquired it from. And he has asked for our help to stop it from happening. So maybe they are finally, well, at least in this case, being forthcoming. Has anyone mentioned to her that the Borg was using I? Yeah. Garbage? Okay. Well, uh, you would have been in the or Was I in the call? Or what? Yeah, yeah, you, you were, were in the call. the call. I was on the call. So, Or she was on the call. Actually, so, I have a really good question. Does mm -hmm. the Borg have emotions? It's a good question. Uh, it certainly was not displaying any. Hmm. hmm. So we have a few options. We can go back with our Borg shortly before the detonation occurs and try and stop it there, pleading to the Borg of all people why they need to stop whatever they're doing. 
Um, or we can try and keep them from getting the supplies to do this in the first place. Matic, with your experience of temporal tomfoolery, um, do you think it's wise to go back farther and disrupt their ingredient gathering? Or what do you think? So on a personal level, um, I think that going back and disrupting the collection of the Boronite ore um, would be the safest bet just because it, if the Borg are unable to get it from this specific source and they would have to begin searching for another source, um, the thing is, is that as a Starfleet officer, I do have to recommend that <clears throat> we do try at least try to stop the explosion um just for the simple fact of there's less causality effect that can be uh determined or can be uh performed due to our actions in the past right stopping an explosion that's destroying some of subspace that's that is a relatively recent occurrence. This is where, okay, so this is where the time stuff gets funny. So let's say they got the Boronite ore two weeks ago. Let's, I'm just giving out, I'm just giving out a date. Mm -hmm. um, well, they realize they can't use that Boronite ore. So then they go to another suspected place that maybe has some Ferengi's mining on it or did we ever get the location of where this explosion's happening or um you would have to get that information from one of 13 um but <clears throat> the arrangement was that one of 13 would follow you back in time and then transwarp you to the set of coordinates the no. potential the but potential it's... as as Maddox is putting it the potential of butterfly cascading effect. Uh, effects through time would be lessened if we do it closer to the time of the explosion. Right, but if we do it closer to the time of explosion, our our effect can be we might have a larger effect on what happens if it does ha if we fail. Correct. Also, but isn't we... isn't boronite? How much do we know about boronite? Well, we know it's very rare. Right. So how likely is it that they can find more? I mean, I wouldn't, with the Borg's advancements um, and with the with Borg technology, I don't foresee it. I don't foresee it that they would have to take long to find more. You know, if you they have... You know, this sphere that's sitting outside is talking with a sphere that's patrolling the edge of the Delta Galaxy, Delta Quadrant. Mm -hmm. You know, it's connect it's connected with something by the Talaxian homeward. It's, you know, it doesn't take much along with their trans war pubs, which I'm assuming they've probably rebuilt at some point since Voyager. Um, that it wouldn't, it would still take them time to find new Boronites, but the amount, but it's just the, due to the fact of there's too many unknown variables that could attribute down the road, mm -hmm. even well past our time, that we, do, we stop the explosion versus we go and poison the Boronite. Right. So I we think we also, have a, a, if, oh, if, um, if we go back, we also avoid direct confrontation with the Borg, likely, which part of our orders is to avoid upsetting them. Yes, but I think, Captain, that we need to be aware of the reality that a, a confrontation with them may be inevitable in this. And to that end, I'd like your permission to work with Commander Maddock on constructing a cache of transphasic torpedoes. <laughs> I 
in addition to that request uh, <laughs> regarding our orders, the Omega Directive once again is clear that our orders do not apply in this situation. Hmm. But we still should be mindful of the temporal effects that anything that we do might have. Just because they don't necessarily apply doesn't mean that we should ignore them completely. Okay, so, okay. So why don't we plan A, go to the day before it happened, try and stop it that way, have a plan B, maybe we can cancel out the ripple effect by some kind of subspace wavelength or something. <laughs> if it does explode, we can have that in our pocket. And at the very worst, if it's not going well, we can always just jump back again <laughs> and contaminate the Fortnite. We well, we have to figure out where it came from in the first place, so we have to go we have to go to plan A. We we wouldn't know where to even look for it, I'm sure. Um couldn't one of thirteen myself, tell us Captain. What yeah. Uh I mean I've already contacted Sin once from the future in our past. I'm assuming that I may have left other information for her at some point. Um, you know, obviously, we, I was able to get, we were, me, myself, and, or me, Tobin, and uh, Vassar were able to give ourselves the Temporal Accord, so at least one of us survives it, hopefully. But um, in the event that something may go wrong i may have left one of us may have left something behind that would tell us more information it may be encrypted it may not unlock until a certain you know maybe time locked it may be location locked there may be considerations to allow us to have access to this information but you know we could jump back and then all of a sudden there's a log from one of us saying oh hey the Borg are going to betray us. Fuck them. Or, you know, there could be, oh, hey, the Borg worked with us and everything's hunky-dory. We've seen Kumbaya. And on that note, or... Vassar, since you have the Accords in your Hollow Matrix, I would like you to roll me a Insight and Command, please. A difficulty of two. Would anybody mind if I spend a momentum on this? Spend it. By all means. Absolutely. That just gives me one more dice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three Ooh. successes, which yes. means you get that momentum right back. Vassar, you, of course, hear all this from Matic, and maybe you start to process the information contained within the data dump that you got. And sure enough, as you're going through it, there is a new piece of data that was not there before, or maybe it was encrypted, however you'd like to think about it. But the data is a set of coordinates, and it is for coordinates in the Delta Quadrant. <laughs> Bassar, you have that look on your face again. What's going on? <laughs> During this discussion, it became prudent to re-examine the Accords as we sent them to ourselves, and I have discovered a set of coordinates in the Delta Quadrant. I can map them in stellar cartography if you wish. Yeah, let's do it. Let's get the show on the road. See? And also, let's let's uh, go ahead and let Mr. One of what? Ten? One of thirteen? One of thirteen. Well, you can go let him out. Uh, Captain, another thing that I might suggest? Yes, uh, Mr. Maddox? Seeing as we do have the coordinates, we could not let one of 13 know we have the coordinates. We could send Captain Sin and her ship to attempt to contaminate or at least follow the path of the Boronite War. And then they they go back a little further than us, so that way they can at least provide some scouting and some intel on the situation before we arrive. May I suggest an additional course of action? We should uh, we should ask our board guest if where they 
committed their accident. And if the coordinates align, we know we can trust them. So, I didn't think you had it in you. Had uh, it, Captain. Deception. Uh, he's full of surprises. Mm. All right, I like the plan. Good job, everyone. Any last thoughts? Commander Lee, you look like you wanted to say something. Well, I just wanted to ask a question of Commanders William and Maddock. With respect to the um, transphasic torpedo that you wish to develop, could we in some way modify one of them as the Starship Voyager intended to in order to neutralize the subspace cascading variants itself? Given that these transphasic torpedoes operate on multiple different layers of subspace, would it be able to disrupt one of those uh, variances once it has actually begun? I mean, if, if we, we can get if we can get sufficient high resolution sensor imagery of the cascade itself, from what I understand of the torpedoes, they deliver a, a subspace compression pulse in an asymmetric superposition of multiple phase states. Uh, it's not outside the realm of possibility that we could modify one to do this if we knew which specific layer of subspace was being most heavily impacted by the cascade. Hmm. All right, something to contemplate. We did lose Matic there for a second. We'll get the webcams fixed in a moment. But yeah, sounds like you guys have Good a plan. Good old Matic. All right, so let's uh, let's get this plan on the road. Uh, so what I thought would be fun is if uh, both Rast and Vassar went down to go see one of thirteen to let them out. So let's go to the theater of the mind page for this one. So uh, Rast, uh, you and Vassar head down to the brig, and uh, sitting behind one of the force fields uh, in the rather spacious brig uh, is a. Well, a Borg drone. Uh, they appear to be more or less kitted out with the artificial arm. Uh, standard sort of eye. Uh, their left eye has been taken over by cybernetics. And uh, what you're noticing is that one of 13 is just standing in the middle of the brig and just waiting. Doesn't seem to be trying to break through the force field. Doesn't seem to be really moving or scanning. Just sitting there. We have been discussing your proposal. And one of 13 looks specifically at you. Go on. Where is the location that this is all happening? And uh, he rattles off a set, set of coordinates. Does that match the coordinates that our uh, friend Vassar has? Let's have you roll a uh, insight and con uh, difficulty of two. And while you're doing that, let's get the webcams fixed. So, John, you can leave yours on. And then everybody but Matic needs to turn theirs off. And then Dag, turn yours on. And then Captain. And then Williams. Then Lee. All right, cool. Webcams are fixed. This is why you have backup generators for your house <laughs> in Texas. Because game night goes on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you want to make that roll, Vassar? That was an inside con? Correct. A difficulty of two. Does that work, Does that work for that. you? Oh, mine's probably good. Yeah, my inside con is good. I'll, I'll roll it. Famous last words, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Very much so. We'll spend one of our momentum. Okay. Um, and just behavioral analysis? No, nah, unfortunately, or... this would be like uh, astrometrics or stellar cartography. Yeah, that's not me. Okay. okay. Two successes is all you need. No, the set of coordinates that the uh, Borg drone has just given you are for a completely different uh, area of space. So it is the coordinates you receive from Vassar 
are basically two or three sectors over, maybe about a day's travel at high warp. Okay, so what is this, like a treasure hunt or something? We got to go, we got to go to the... Would I be ones. able to use my neural interface to feed both sets of coordinates to a science lab and have a grunt ensign uh, <laughs> try to use those two points to extrapolate meaning? Okay. Yeah, you can certainly have that systems, happen. Uh, we'll ask what the uh, my course, suspicion is, What was my, the course my, and heading of the ship? The uh, course and that heading... way we can see if maybe they went through the area that we're talking about. Are you asking this of one of 13 or? Yeah, one of 13. Okay. Uh, so Dag, I think I know you were going with this though. Um, so one of 13 replies, uh, the, let me ask this. What is the specific, re, let me make sure I have the wording of your question correctly. You want to know the heading of the board ship or the yes. heading? Okay. What was the heading of the Borg ship in the days prior to the experimentation? Okay. Wanted to make sure. So 1 of 13 says, My sphere was located at Unimatrix 009 prior to the explosion. And can we plot that out to see whether or not our coordinate falls in line with the, uh, with the course plotting? You could. Uh, one of 13 will, of course, provide some additional navigational data. But uh, when you go to plug that in, yeah, they, they pretty much just sat in their one sector and didn't go anywhere near the, uh, the other uh, set of coordinates. Hmm. But just as a reminder, that's just for one of 13's sphere. Doesn't mean that other board ships couldn't have done so. Right. You know what? I'm just going to come out and ask him, do these coordinates mean anything to you? And okay. I'll give him the other coordinates. Takes the coordinates, kind of cocks his head to the side a little bit and says, yes, these are the coordinates where we assimilated species 0973. Commander, may I ask a question? By all means. Did that species have technical superiority in stabilizing the ore boronite. That is why we assimilated them. I believe the coordinates we were given are the coordinates to which we should go. How long ago did the assimilation take place? Approximately two days prior to our experiment. And the experiment was? Creation of particle 010. And that, I apologize, uh, that experiment took place when? Uh, it would have been a few hours before the uh, Borg Sphere came out of the Transworld Pub at Daedalus. Commander, I believe we have a course of action we can deliver to the captain. I believe we do as well. Thank you for your time, 1 of 13. 1 of 13 just goes back to being sort of a passive sort of... Uh, standing ornament in the brig unless you want to like take him somewhere why don't you uh come with us in case the captain has any further questions and uh even before you prompt the security officer in the brig to lower the force field uh one of 13 walks up to that precipice steps through it and there's the shimmer of the force field that would normally contain someone but as a borg he just walks on through it yep yep and uh falls in line behind you <laughs> I kind of like. I keep I'm saying, kind of like the burrs. idea that he stayed there. You know, we need physical nice. bars. Like, yeah, what? we need to put bars on the doors. All right, well, saying this. That's your summer project while you're as out a, of school. As How a security that? subroutine, <laughs> I would like to isolate the sensor readings for that event and send them to both tactical security and science. Noted. All right, <laughs> so we are going to cut to the ready room here. As soon as I find Vassar's token. There he is. All right, so Captain, there's a chime at your ready room door. Come in. And in steps uh, Lieutenant Commander Vassar, Commander Rast, and one of 13. 
Hello, 1 of 13. We believe that we have a, a course of action for you to consider, Captain. All right, let's hear it. I will let I will let Vassar uh, take the lead on this. He uh, he and I seem to see eye to eye on this particular occasion. Thank you, Commander. Captain, approximately 48 hours ago, one of 13 has told us that the Borg encountered a species that was able to successfully stabilize the Boronite ore. It is my belief that we should head to those coordinates, the ones that uh, I received earlier, and attempt to either prevent the assimilation of the species or disrupt whatever signals led the Borg to that world in the first place. Without that knowledge, they would not be able to successfully conduct their experiment, which took place only a few hours before their wreckage appeared in front of the ship. So if this species knew how to stabilize particle, why are we in the predicament we're in now? They had additional information that I believe the Borg found valuable in adding to their own experimentation. Hmm. All right, so an outside factor. All right. The Borg have assimilated several worlds with Omega knowledge. They would be able to combine that into a more enhanced experiment than those individual words, worlds. Do we know what species this is? Do we know? Uh, add a character, you've never heard of a species 0973, even cross-referencing what you do know of the Borg. No, species, okay. the species is unknown to the Federation at this time. All right, what area of space is this in? I know it's Unimatrix, whatever from Borg, but... Uh, it is in the uh, far reaches of the Delta Quadrant, so you are gonna okay. need to transwarp to get there. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, um, if we can prevent assimilation and detonation of the particle, I say we do that. And you'll potentially have another first contact under your belt, Captain. Joy. I wish it was under calmer pretenses, as usual. Vassar will turn to one of 13. One of 13. Would you be able to use the resources at your disposal, including the future knowledge of the Omega experiment to dissuade the Borg from assimilating this world? It was not a world that was assimilated. It was a single ship. It was all that remained of their species. A more prudent imperative, Captain. The question stands one of 13 one of 13 doesn't answer he just sort of sits there and maybe his cybernetic and his arm whirs a little bit but does not answer uh why are you hesitant to answer that question you've been very forthcoming so far it is not relevant to this discussion <clears throat> well you requested our help and we need to know everything including how you can help us help you. I believe I am already providing the transwarp conduit that will take you to prevent this event from occurring in the first place. So out of character, if we have him convince the board not to do it, mm -hmm. or even if he, if he would, I just wonder what effect that would have. <laughs> One way to find out. Okay, well, we can cross that bridge <laughs> when we get mm -hmm. across that quadrant. So, um, all right, I think we have everything else we need. Um, I will check in with Commander Lee and Williams on the torpedoes they were working on. All right, um, one of 13, why don't you uh, come with me? Just I would stay like with to. me. 
I would like to accompany the captain. Okay. So, as we uh, shift scenes here, it's going to be Williams and who else modifying the torpedoes? Uh, I know myself and Matic are working on it, and, I mean, Commander Lee's idea of using the transphasic torpedo to potentially stop the uh, subspace cascade is a, a, a creative use of it, so I would like for him to be there, too. Okay. And so... while we are walking, Captain, I would... Uh, Vassar will look to you and speak in very low tones. We may have an ethical dilemma. If we are unable to stop the Borg from assimilating the ship, we will have to destroy it. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. <clears throat> Your concern is noted, Vassar. Thank you, Captain. Well, let's hope it does not come to that. I share the sentiment. Alrighty. So, uh, while you are en route, uh, we're going to cut to the armory where uh, Lee Tobin, Maddock, and Williams are currently uh, elbow deep in a torpedo, pulling out wires, adding new li little bits of equipment. And uh, I would like, uh, let's say that if Williams does a roll here, that'll be a daring and a security if Maddock is doing the role, it's a daring engineering. If Tobin is doing the role, as you probably can guess, it's a daring science. Uh, whoever does the role here, you can be assisted by one other individual. So I'll let you guys decide how that's going to play out. Who's, who's going to do this? I've, I've got a total of 16 if I do it. Take it away. I have uh, 15. So yeah, you do it and then... <laughs> All right. I like how disappointed he sounds. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> no, I'm just... Uh. Um, all right. GM, does my um, uh, shipboard tactical systems focus apply here? I'd let it happen, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to spend a point of momentum to get an extra... Oh, that's what I forgot to tell you, the difficulty. So you may be spending more. Um, okay. The difficulty oh. on this is going to be a four. And okay, well, I'm going to make the complication range a 17 to 20 with some threat. Cool. Uh, well, I'm going to spend three total points of momentum to get an extra two dice. Okay. All right. And I think you're too momentumatic. Uh, scene change. Oh, you're right. Scene change. Good call. I mean, unless you unless no, I mean, you, you, you know, brought it uh, up. Scene change. Uh, what? What? What scene change? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, who's going to assist me? Would my subspace dynamics focus apply to the uh, It assist? definitely would, yes. Then would you mind if I take that? Go for uh, it. Yes, please. All right, we need to see at least one success from Lee here. Come on. Yeah, you get two successes for a total of five successes, so you get a momentum right back. Thank and God. yeah, what I would say is with the three of you working together, you are able to create one transphasic torpedo now <laughs> you have two momentum here or at least two momentum if you give me two momentum to create the advantage that you have made more torpedoes i will allow you to have three transphasic torpedoes what if instead of that we gave you three threat i would take threat but i think you need to pitch that to your other players what do you think guys want to make it want to make it interesting what are we what are we spending not threat what was the first offer uh two momentum to create the advantage for three torpedoes i mean you're the captain how much momentum do we have we have three momentum. three right now i'm sure we'll gain more uh just trying to get there because if i remember correctly qsd isn't that hard of a role all right i think i think momentum all right Momentum it I is. Agree. Okay. Then it, it. it is so Either noted way. that the Fenrir is now carrying three transphasic torpedoes. And what I'm going to say is that the transphasic torpedo special effect is that it will disable the regeneration factor of any Borg vessel. And otherwise, we're going to treat it like a quantum torpedo. Wow. Okay. I guess we're in a 
<laughs> I mean, if we have to, if we have to, no, we can. Well, we spent two momentum on it, so we're gonna probably use those. <laughs> um, okay, it's, good job. I was gonna say, it's right about then that Captain and Vassar, you guys walk into the armory just as they're finishing up. Yeah. All right. Um, Captain walks in, takes a look around. Uh, are they? Are they? Are you guys done with it yet? Are you done? You have three of them. Out. Yeah, I think that's as okay. good as it's going to get right now. All right, she's going to kind of walk by them and take a look at each one. And she's like, "All right, what Frankenstein did you uh, put together for me today?" Well, I mean, the transphasic torpedoes. Mm -hmm. uh, they should be very effective against the Borg if we need to use them. Um, and the more I think about it, and Commander Maddox, Commander Lee, feel free to chime in on this, but the more I think about it, the more I think we could potentially use one or all of these to counteract the subspace cascade effect if we if we fail to prevent uh, the board from destabilizing Omega. Yes, by tuning it to the appropriate amplitude and also uh, setting it just off frequency from the uh, uh, Omega Wave Cascade, we might be able to disrupt it as it is in progress. Although, I would rather reserve that as a last resort. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, we don't we don't want the particle to be created in the first place, but I don't know if if it if it happened at all. We were and we perceived it. Maybe we fail, although I barely passed elementary temporal mechanics at the academy. Also, I'd rather not travel into Borg space without transphasic torpedoes. So let's try to reserve them for Borg cubes if necessary. Agreed. All right. And while that's all going on, uh, Rast, you pass by the holodeck with one of 13, and one of 13 stops at the door and says, Commander Rast, is this what you call a holodeck? That is correct. Might I examine the interior? For what purpose? I am curious. <laughs> <laughs> Curiosity is irrelevant. <laughs> Curiosity may be irrelevant. However, it is, believe it or not, a mission to acquire new data, even as a board. What what kind of information do you No, come on. <laughs> Roll me we're gonna do an opposed presence command here. Okay. Should have been like, no, that's a sonic shower. <laughs> <laughs> You've heard of one of those, haven't you? Oh, maybe it's a, not. It's the broom closet. Yeah. I also have Dauntless. Oh, I forget what Dauntless does. Let's look that up real fast. Dauntless. Whenever you attempt a task, yes, so you would get a bonus d20 to your pool. Very nice. And that and means I will spend one threat so that he gets three dice. And this is presence command? Correct. All right. And we, and, and we have that nice uh, extra uh, momentum there. I'm going to go ahead and use that, too. So the one thing <sighs> is that any bonus die oh, that's against right. the total. That's true. Okay. You could give me the one momentum and one no, threat. No, no, not going to do it. <laughs> not going to do it. It wouldn't be prudent. Uh, and um, I'm going to assume that persuasion. Uh, persuasion definitely would apply, yeah. Will work here. So. All right. Come on, Borg. Survey That's says. Three successes. Three successes. Very nice. Uh, oh. So he also has achieved three successes. So I now need to make the difficult decision as the GM. Who do I let win this one out? 
just staring at each uh, other in the hallway. Get out the deck of 52 and then whoever draws highest card. I'll leave spend, the chance. I'll spend two threat to create the quote unquote complication that one of 13 will literally just walk into the holodeck with or without your permission. Oh, oh, <sighs> what a toddler. Yeah, I'll follow him. Nope. Let's go to the holodeck. There we go. All right. So uh, you step into the holodeck, which uh, is stylized after Voyager's holodeck, which means that the floor is, of course, the square pattern of yellow lines lined out in a grid. The walls are sort of uh, mesh wire that uh, make up the holo projectors, and there's like little lights at every little intersection of the wires that are the emitters themselves. Um, but as you walk in, uh, you notice, Rast, that after the doors are sealed, are sealed, that the entire room takes upon a blue shift, a blue hue. And before you, uh, one of 13's form begins to change. And instead of one of 13, you're now looking at someone you have never met in character, but out of character, it looks like Agent Redlam. And Agent Redlam says, Commander Rast, I apologize for the deception. My name is Agent Redlam, and I am here to ensure that the Omega Directive is carried out. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to say this as a point of order. Maddox would not have submitted any reports saying that he had been questioned or investigated. <laughs> We broke the captain. I love it. <laughs> uh, and who this might you crazy. be? I am a member of the Temporal Integrity Commission. It's been my job to clean up Maddox messes, and this happens to be one of them. What? <laughs> so you're... You're not one of 13. No, and in fact, the fact that I am not one of 13, you are not to disclose it outside of this room. Just calm badge everybody, say it. I'm so many questions. <laughs> How can you walk through a fucking force field then? <laughs> Would this be the time for a colorful metaphor? I think so. Rast, what are you going to do? Rash just look just looks at him and says we were we were already doing this there and uh he is actually he is visibly upset okay and he is going to shove the agent out of the way and exit the hol uh, exit the holodeck okay so when you go to the door, the door does not open. It just stays shut. And Redlam says, I apologize, Commander Rast, until our discussion is finished. I cannot let you leave. This guy. Who the? <clears throat> Rast turns around, obviously, um, starting to get uh, a little... Um, anxious. Okay. This is, what else is there to discuss at this point? You will be faced with a challenge, an ethical dilemma. It is imperative that you save the species in question. If you destroy the species that you will encounter in approximately 12 hours time, yeah. local uh... ship time, then the Borg will still acquire the necessary ore to create Omega. God damn it. All right. Discussion over. There is just one thing. I understand that uh, you were all visited by a Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, my God. You Santa out of this. Do not see the relevancy of this uh, 
this additional questioning. As, uh, Ra Ra as Rast is now, like, his palm is rubbing on the uh, on the hilt of his dagger. Okay. And uh, Redlam, it, you know, he's able to read the, the thing and says, Very well, Commander Rast, our discussion is over. My apologies if I was perhaps too blunt. And his appearance shifts. He turns back into one of 13. And uh, the blue hue leaves from the holodeck and the door opens. <sighs> Rast goes uh, purposely walking down the hallway, kind of completely forgetting where he was originally going. Okay. So up next, we're going to cut to the bridge, maybe about an hour or so later after everything has been resolved. Uh, well, let me ask this. Does anybody have a specific scene they'd like to get out of the way before we do time travel shenanigans? Well, none of us know what just happened, technically. Correct. So, just saying. Um, yeah, that was great, anyway. <laughs> you will. <laughs> Matic, let's do... Uh, Matic will pull Vassar and Lee into his lab again. <laughs> Okay. And uh, um, Rast is also going to try to find uh, the captain after that. Okay, so we'll do the lab scene, and then we'll go to the ready room. Oh. So yeah, Lee Tobin, uh, Vassar, and Matic, you are pulled into the science lab. All right. Um, so it seems that our future selves like to keep uh, giving us more and more information as it seems relatively convenient. Um, I suggest the three of us work together right now. Find where, find the timestamps, find the relevancy of the data that's been given to us, and see if there's any other surprises that's coming up. Um, I can understand that right now may not be a good time, but seeing as we don't have to follow these accords yet, we have all the time in the galaxy. So. Uh, Basar, let's start with your program. Let's go over it and uh, let's look at the encrypted data dump and uh, let's see if there's any additional information that uh, we may have given ourselves. A uh, screen flickers next to Matic presenting the encrypted data dump. I have been running a encrypted algorithm along my systems and any uh, writings within the temporal accords as we received them. It is logical to assume that my future self would not play coy, so to speak, with that information were it to save our lives. Mm, your future self may not have. Uh, my future self is probably the same asshole I am now. Um, I did have a specific uh, encoding sequence that i used um while working under uh project expect tempest um maybe we could try running your data dump through that coding sequence to see if i left anything yeah uh, i think this is an excellent time for a roll so vasar you're going to be rolling a insight and a engineering your hollow programming focus would apply here uh, I would then say that both Matic and Lee Tobin, both of you can assist, and you are similarly going to be doing an insight and engineering. And the difficulty on this is going to be a five. Good God. Okay, so just the one success from Vassar. Unless you wanted to buy additional dice there, Dag. I did not ask the question before I made my roll. I will, any... uh, before anyone else rolls, if you want to buy additional dice, I'll let you do it. For yeah. Vassar's roll or for him to re-roll, basically, or add to those rolls? Or... Add to those rolls, yeah. Okay. Um, how much momentum do we have currently? We have one. Honestly, I would say let's give him threat. How much threat is sufficient for an additional dice? 
Uh, well, it's the same as momentum spins. Um, mm -hmm. I would honestly say give him five threat for three dice. So it's one momentum or one threat for one extra die for a total of three. It's three momentum or three threat for a total of four dice. It's six momentum or six threat for five dice. And you can offset that by you can substitute threat with momentum and vice versa. I feel like I would like a powwow with the other players before making this decision at their expense. Uh, or at our game. Rast is, yeah. uh, Rast is okay with this. Okay. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah, come on. We, we let our future selves down. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was, okay. Uh, that happened happens. anyway. <laughs> yeah. That was that was insight engineering. Correct, and you'll be rolling uh, three additional dice here for a total of three in the dice pool. Well, I'm pull a rast right now. And since I've already <laughs> applied my specialization, I can't do it this time because it's basically the same roll, right? No, I mean this you is all part of the same the roll. It, it's the same roll. It's just split up. Okay. Um, so I'm rolling three d20 on top of what I've already done. Correct. Submit and submit. Okay, Ooh. so you are at four successes with a complication. Now comes Lee Tobin and Maddox assist. <sighs> That's pretty okay. Lee Tobin. Nice. Lee, clutch. Very clutch. That is a total of six successes. All right, so you have achieved uh, enough <laughs> successes that you would have a point of momentum which would bring you up to two. And if you give me that two momentum, you will not have a complication. Yes. <laughs> yeah, do it. Okay. Yes. So uh, what I'm going to say is, Lee, you get a free question as science officer, but Matic, what was your specific question? What are you specifically looking for? Um, specifically? Maddox looking for anything that he would have left using the uh, project uh, Expected Tempest um, encryption coding that he would have also used whenever he made the chroniton sensors, whenever he did anything at the Daystrom Institute. Mm -hmm. He'd be utilizing his own personal uh, cipher um, and encryption to make sure that it was only him that could access it. So you're looking for any data that is locked up by his own cipher within the the payload that we received. Right. Gotcha. So you're going to hate me a little bit for this, but you do find something. Uh, you find two bits of information. The first is a recipe for a new type of beer. The second is a reminder that you really, really shouldn't forget your 25th anniversary with a certain wife. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Matic will upload the beer recipe to the replicator and then replicate it. Mm -hmm. um, and then he will also make sure to set a reminder in his calendar, like for a week leading up to three reminders a day. Like, no, like, they put him as like priority one, like, even if I'm in a meeting with the captain alert me kind of thing gotcha what and then well that, that that could be like a clue because didn't as out of character didn't captain sin like talk to Rast about how to get to maddox or something mm -hmm. okay. uh, maddox okay. going to drink the drink and see how it is he's also going to replicate one for lee yeah so uh, uh i don't get from the drink dirty sir <laughs> But uh, thank you, nonetheless. I mean, it was given to me by future me, so maybe it's something that we have to do. How is it, by the way? Uh, so I'm not super knowledgeable when it comes to beer, but I do know my liquor. Um, so the beer tastes a little bit hoppy. It's a nice dark lager. Um, it's got a nice smooth aftertaste to it. Um, but because it's synthahol, it probably isn't, you know, real kick kind of a thing. So it's, it's it's decent. I mean, it's not as good as Beckett's was on the Lysithia, but it'll work. And then while you're figuring out all that, uh, Lee, what is your free question? What is it that you're looking for in this data dump? 
Um, I'm curious about the, unless anyone has a question that they'd like to ask either Maddox or Dag. I would defer to you in this instance. Um, I'd like to determine the exact start dates on which each of those individual messages was sent so that I can set up a program that will automatically send those specific messages at those precise start dates in order to ensure that this sort of predestination paradox actually carries through exactly as it is supposed to. Very well. Uh, because it's nebulous at the moment, the uh, <laughs> send back time, as it were, would be approximately two days from now local ship time. How well does that time coincide with us signing the accords? Like, do we send it, then sign the accords, or like, which one comes first? That I would say is unclear. All right. <laughs> but things just got a lot more interesting. Matt's going to take another drink. All right. Let's get back to figuring this shit out. All right. So we're going to cut next to the ready room where, Captain, there's another chime at your door. Uh, Rast is also going to have uh, dropped one of 13 back off at the break. I, I figured as much. Come in. Captain, I've had a very enlightening conversation with one of 13. Oh, go on. Yes, it is a uh he he uh takes a seat and he looks towards the captain and uh is going to project tele telepathy okay i am now allowed to speak of this encounter but at least in this case i can skirt the uh the loss for the benefits of you uh our is this all it's just all telepathy yep all in your mind saying? so she's like not used to that <laughs> yeah it's the first time he's ever done it too she's gonna have a seat <laughs> <laughs> our borg visitor is actually an agent of the temporal police And he uh, has instructed us that it is imperative that the species we are going to go encounter is not destroyed. Bree will pause, blink, and then say out loud, what? <laughs> I'm glad we were able to have this, have this quick meeting, uh, Captain. I mean, I'm assuming she can't, like, answer back, right? Uh, I would say that, based on my reading, is uh, you don't know Rast well enough yet. Okay. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. Let's, let's make it a roll. You know what? Let's let's leave this up to the dice to the side. Ooh. Okay. So roll me, Watney, roll me a, let's call this a presence. And I could see an argument for command. I could see an argument for medicine. Uh, I tell you what, let's do a presence medicine because you never hear about those types of roles. <laughs> Level one medicine. Uh, difficulty on this is just a one, though. Oh, okay. And you get um, an automatic. Yep. Is it two? Yeah, it's two dice. Yeah, and then no focus. I don't think so. No, nah, I don't think there's one on your sheet, unfortunately. All right, so that's a total of three successes, which means you get two momentum. You may reply in kind in your mind if you so wish. Okay, so she's going to have said that out loud and realize maybe she could do this, like, in kind. Mm -hmm. So she's going to try and project her thoughts. And Ras will pick this up. She's like, you're telling me one of 13 is... A temporal agent? I have relayed this information. I have not told you anything. Right, 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 right. Just like, 
we have to follow this to the T. Yes. And we can't tell anyone else. That is your prerogative, Captain. Don't tell anyone else. I wasn't planning on it. All right. Thank you. This is weird. <clears throat> She's going to clear her throat, her physical throat, and stand. <clears throat> well, thank you, Commander Rast. Oh, your yes. Report. Uh, the, du the duty logs, as I uh, promised. And he hands yes. her, he hands her a, a tab, a tablet. Thank you. Yes. Carry on with your duties. <laughs> and he'll exit. All righty. So we are going to cut to the bridge where uh, you all are preparing for your actual jaunt back in time. This is maybe 30 minutes to an hour later. And my question is, um, when it comes to the slingshot um, procedure that you're going to be doing around the trinary stars, um, who's going to be actually piloting during this maneuver? Can we use the supporting character that's actually the pilot? You could, uh, but I would say that comparatively their stats are not as high as, say, Williams or Rast. Ready? <laughs> um, so who has the highest for this? Well, I mean, what, what, what would the role be? Would it be Daring Con or Control Con? Uh, it would be Daring Con, and uh, I would allow one assist from any player, and Temporal Mechanics could be a focus there. Um, but the ship will assist with a engines con. The difficulty on this is a five, and the complication range is a 16 to 20. I'm, I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it to Williams. Oh, an assist would roll the same <laughs> stats, would it not? Uh, an assist can roll different stats. So while he's rolling a daring con, you could assist with a daring science. Okay. So unless my... unless oh. Williams wants to relent that uh, Rast is the better pilot, and then I'll take it. But he's not though. <laughs> Debatable. Oh boy. Oh boy. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and give this one a go. Uh, GM would helm operations apply here? It would indeed. Yes. And you do have two momentum at the moment. Perfect. Uh, I am going to spend. Let's see. Give him a threat and uh, I'm going to spend dice. both those momentum and give you three threat to get uh, an additional. Uh, I think it's four threat, but okay. Four threat, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. My math is head, head math is not good for me, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll get an extra an extra three dice. So let's let's right. do this. And uh, someone can get the ship engines con, and then uh, who would be assisting him on the player side? I will assist with a. Uh... Daring science. Okay. Focus in temporal mechanics. Yep. No, apparently Williams really is the better pilot because that's already six successes. Engines what? Uh, engines con. <laughs> All right. So you have one momentum, and uh, Williams, what happens is you set in the set of coordinates that you have previously worked out, and uh, you just need the word from the captain to engage. Of course, plot it and laid in, Captain. Now, I'm, now I'm curious. Engage. Oh, I would have done horribly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, I mean, you know what I just realized? The complication okay. nope, range. No, no, no. So you forgot it earlier. You can forget it this time. What happens is, uh, Williams, you lay in your coordinates, you engage the impulse engines, and you begin sort of weaving in and out between the trinary stars. And as you do, you pick up more and more momentum. And then right at the breakaway point, you engage your warp engines, and a rift in space-time opens up and the Fenrir passes through it. And that is where we're going to take our 10-minute break. So uh, we will be back in 10-minute streams. Stick around.
And welcome back, everyone, to part two of session nine of Fenrir, uh, where we last left off before the break. The uh, intrepid crew of the Fenrir had engaged in a, some would say, risky maneuver to use a trinary star system <coughs> to slingshot themselves Thank back you, in sir. time. And sure enough, they managed to sling themselves back in time, but several things happened all at once. So immediately as you enter the time stream, uh, sparks begin to rain from consoles. Now, we have established that the ceiling tiles stay intact here, <laughs> so no ceiling tiles drop. Uh, however, I am going to roll uh, a few breaches as things across the ship uh, begin to deal with the strain, and I will flavor those appropriately once I know what they are. So, let's see, a weapons and a structure. <laughs> Oh, God. The torpedoes that we built. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all and I it. rolled an effect. Oh, God. Okay. So, let's see. There's six of you. So, I'm going to roll a D6. All right. Who's three on the overlay? Okay. That's going to be interesting. So, narratively, here's what happens. Uh, Again, console sparking. The view screen is sort of a, a blue tunnel as you are traveling through time. And... As the ship jostles and rocks, as inertial dampers do their damnedest to, you know, keep everything stable, um, you're flung about violently throughout the bridge and throughout the ship. And immediately, Williams, you're seeing that there is a breach to the lateral phaser array on the saucer section. And you're also seeing that there has been a breach in main engineering. Uh, yeah, no, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll report that while doing the uh, you know, Star Trek shake. The Star Trek shake, as it's called. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. You said ventral phasers or? Uh, lateral. Lateral, yeah. Damage to the lateral phaser array, and uh, we've got a hole breach in main engineering. How bad? Casualty reports coming in. Casualty reports come in. There are approximately seven injured. One of them is severe, and the severe injury is Jensen. Oh. Of course, it's Jensen. Uh, seven, <laughs> seven injured, one critical. Uh, is the force field holding? Structural containment fields are holding. How's the warp for? It's doing fine. God says from above. <laughs> <laughs> matter anti oh, it's fine. Cool. <laughs> matter anti matter containment is stable. Right. Um, Matic will, with, will turn to the captain. Uh, I can head down to main engineering and start working on, uh, trying to get the whole breach there fixed and then also work on getting our weapons back up. Um, most I could do from here is, uh, just coordinate with seven people down. That won't be. All right. Yeah. Go ahead. With regards to the weapons from here, I may be able to do a bypass through secondary systems. Okay. But first, where are we? Yeah, so at this point, you guys have come out of that uh, temporal tunnel, and you are in the same trinary star system, but importantly, 
you do not see deep space Daedalus there on sensors, which means you've definitely traveled in time, but you don't know when you are. Uh, did we Commander? know the age of the stars? Yeah. Um... Beforehand. I would say, yeah, you would have, that would have been common knowledge. Okay. Um, I mean, judging time by a star age is kind of dramatic, but um, what other ways can we tell time? Maybe oh, we can. can... Communications <laughs> officer that hasn't been named or created yet. Uh, <laughs> what, uh, are you picking up any federate, any signals at all? No, I am not detecting any Federation signals within the sector. Um, Captain, can I or can I suggest uh, having uh, Commander Lee and Vassar uh, run uh, star charts in astrometrics? Yes, we can determine the relative age of the universe at this point based on stellar drift, or at least the uh, difference between our time and the one that we've arrived in. Okay. Uh, Williams, what were you going to say? I was going to say we could potentially uh, attempt to link up with, you know, although since we are out of time here, as it were, it may be wise, but as a last resort, we could link up with uh, the nearest Starfleet beacon through subspace to determine local time. So um, maybe the board's one here at this time. And Go what ahead, I would Maddie. say, oh, well, real the quick. Uh, Lord Sphere okay. and Captain Sinship, did they come through yet? That's what I was going to say, is okay. that on sensors, you are not detecting the Nalore, you are not detecting the Sphere. Yeah, we're alone here. Can someone tell me what went wrong? The course calculations I... were right on the money. My best guess is that uh, during initialization of the deflector array in order to create the uh, time slip, um, we probably had a solar flare or some uh, or something from the sun itself that would have caused a chronotonic imbalance among the ship itself um, from the reports I'm reading as of right now, it's possible that the pieces that are damaged where the breaches are could literally just be two pieces that are floating in space in another time. Um, chronoton readings look like they appear to be somewhat stable across the ship. Um, I'm not reading any sort of feedback loops. I'm not reading any sort of any other damage to internal uh, systems. Um, but best guess is a solar flare causing a chronotonic imbalance in the uh, slipstream. Okay. Commander Matic, uh, although I haven't run the scans yet, I think we might know why you reminded yourself to uh, remember your 25th wedding anniversary? We should resync uh, the ship's computers with Starfleet buoys as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Lee Tobin and Mr. Vassar, I'd like you guys to both roll a reason science. Of course, figure out who's assisting whom. Uh, this is just a sensors operation. The ship is going to assist you with a sensor science. With your advanced sensor suites, that's going to bring the difficulty down from a three to a two. I have a focus in uh, sensor operations. You also so... have one in temporal, so yeah, both would apply here. Okay. Three successes, very yeah. nice. All right, so... Uh... Let's see, Dag, you assisting on that? I am. Uh, four successes with the augmented attribute. Okay. Reason. Do we get focuses on assists? You do, yeah. And uh, temporal mechanics? Yep. Total of five successes, so you get three momentum. So Thanks. yeah, uh, I have good news and I have bad news. Which would you like first? 
bad news. Yeah. Okay. So the bad news is uh, you are approximately uh, in the year 2375, right around the end of the Dominion War, which means this area of space has not been explored by the USS Ophion yet. So you are, if I had to quickly do the start dates in my head, you are approximately 40 to 35 years out of date. And the so next Maddox thing, back in his time frame. Yes, Maddox is. There's probably like three Maddox running around right now. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> what? The good news, though, is that there's nothing stopping you from attempting to get to the correct time, because uh, the trinary stars are still there. You could attempt another slingshot. It would just be another roll, like another <clears throat> task to do so. Like how embarrassing! Yeah. <laughs> you said that uh you said that we're in the middle of the uh 2375 which i believe is the end of the dominion war okay uh, i mean since we've got ample time here maybe we should focus on repairing the ship first before we attempt another time slip there is um, one risky maneuver that we could do Equipped with our quantum slipstream drive, we could attempt to find the Starship Voyager before they encounter the bad wire. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Captain, before we really go and break the temporal prom directive, um, I can't believe I'm actually arguing against this. Uh, as of this moment, um, I will be at the Daystrom Institute. I could send myself an encoded message. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't fully develop the sensors I created by myself. Um, there were schematics that were anonymously, and then Maddox kind of pointed himself like anonymously uh, given to me that aided me in their creation that allowed me to join the uh, Bellafont and then later the Ophian here. Um, that may be a good course of action to follow until we decide to, you know, go stop the Vaudoir or, you know, give future tech to me because we all know how great I am with it. And you haven't already done that? I like to ask permission now. I've realized it's a lot You know easier. what? Sure. <laughs> go ahead with that. In terms of, what was your suggestion this are voyager you're muted yeah you're muted if we can stop voyager uh, from encountering the bad wire then the bad wire ship would most likely not be within the range of the borg yeah but then we would break some kind of cbs rule or something the omega directive stands you're also making the assumption that this is a vaudevoir vessel you don't even know what the Vodwar is, do you? We don't even know, do we? We have Voyager no. We would be, we, yeah, oh, we, we do, we do. Because I thought for some reason we didn't know the species or something like that. We don't. Um, I don't believe that the Borg identified them in any way that we're familiar with. So that leads me to suspect that it's not, in fact, the Vodwar or any of the other races encountered by the Starship Voyager. I will have to do a diagnostic. There may have been a glitch. Okay. We're having a lot of glitches. That's okay. Don't feel bad. And um, what I would say is to throw you a bone. Uh, <laughs> you can repair your breaches just fine. It would take time. But since you have 40 years before you're due anywhere, you have all the time in the world. Um, but what I would say, instead of throwing another difficulty five task at you, what I would say is if you give me the two momentum for a advantage, I will allow you to jump through time again and arrive where you are meant to. I wish my friend would yeah. You have three at the moment. Oh. Okay. Thoughts? Yeah. Crowd I think, sourcing uh, No, that's that's good. Fix the breaches, give them the momentum, and let's go. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Alrighty. 
So after maybe about, uh, I would say somewhere in the, the order of uh, two, two, five days, maybe, uh, you fix up the breaches just fine. You spin it up again. You start soaring around the stars. Once again, enter the temporal vortex. And this time when you pop out, uh, waiting for you is the Nalor and the Borg Sphere. And without even prompting, the Borg Sphere <clears throat> opens up a transwarp conduit and oh. enters into it. I'm assuming you're going to follow? That would hold. Big assumption. Well, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> we have coordinates that we have to get to. Mm -hmm. That I guess the Borg now know that we know those coordinates. Oh, but do they? Because it's not really Borg. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just so confused. Um, I mean, I think regardless, we are going to need to take advantage of the Borg's uh, transwarp network in order to reach anywhere near mm -hmm. those coordinates at all. Remember, you do have one of 13 in the brig. He might be able to provide some insight. Sure he can. Um, <laughs> so, are they already entering? Uh, the Nalor is, yes. The Nalor is already entering uh, the Transwarp Conduit. Okay. Um, in MVAM, mm -hmm. do the individual ship parts have QSD, or is QSD only available whenever the entire ship is together? Uh, only when the ship is together, but you do have warp cores on each of the three sections, mm -hmm. which means that you can sustain warp, which means you could transwarp in MVAM, but QSD, probably not a good idea. Uh, Captain, we could transwarp to wherever the Borg want us to go. Leave the saucer sections and the or leave one of the sections and then take the other two sections over to the coordinates that we're supposed to go to. Worst case scenario. I mean, we're aware of what the worst case scenario. Best case scenario, we complete the job early and get the fuck out of Dodge. Captain, if I may, I'm not a tactical officer, obviously, but the last time that we engaged the multi-vector assault mode, we found that the drain on power became almost crippling. Uh, it might not be best to engage in possibly a tactical encounter with uh, the ship split in that way. I think that splitting the ship is really for emergency situations, and while this is an urgent situation, I would prefer if all the crew were together because we're stronger as one. So um, I'm just a little confused. Like where in space time are we now? Okay, yeah, and I could where probably- is the, the, Where is the transwarp conduit taking us? Yeah, so to explain it a little bit better. So you were initially in the Alpha Quadrant right? and you basically <clears throat> went about two to five days back from where you started which means there's a copy of you currently sitting at Deep Space Daedalus, but that's neither here nor there. Um, the Transwarp Conduit is going to take you from the Alpha Quadrant to the Delta Quadrant, uh, pretty much in the in the general neighborhood of where the experiment, where Unimatrix 09 is. Okay. Now, the Delta, the where you're dumped off, is another one to two days travel um, to the set of coordinates that Vassar sent himself. Okay. Well, if we're landing like a day before the accident occurs, then we don't have time to go and gather that or to go and address the assimilated. I would say is that you could potentially still stop it, but you would be cutting it very close. Okay. As in, Matic would have to redline and overcharge the engines. Well, if if we uh, if we just abandon the species that was assimilated, <laughs> then that goes against the orders from the temporal agent. That is correct. And that is also a very effective way of making sure that the accident doesn't happen. Whereas 
the other option just takes us right to the center after they've been assimilated. So how do we get from where we're at now to the coordinates that Vassar sent us, sent himself? Uh, what I would say is that uh, it would be a con roll because you are within a transwarp conduit. You know that if you branch off at a certain point, okay. um, you can do it, but it will be a difficult task. What do you guys think? I think we should go save them. I agree, Captain, for obvious reasons. I concur. So did the captain mention the temporal agent in character or was that an all out of character thing? Oh no, I was just hypothesizing to the DM, oh. to the group. Um because Bree would probably know this, but I'm like trying to wrap my head around where we're at in space. Mm. So it is possible we would emerge while the ship is under attack. Ooh. Or right before. We might wish to beam up any persons aboard and then scuttle the ship. I'm sure I that would, would say... definitely have a temporal effect on on their species. Um, they are the last of their species. If they are assimilated by the Borg, there will be no more and more of them. Right. So let's go into the tunnel and cut out early. All righty. So sound good. Okay. So uh, this is going to be a daring con. The ship will assist with a computer's con. The difficulty on this will be a four. Uh, let's make it a four. All right, no help from the uh, Fenrir. So either Williams or uh, if Rast is feeling up to it. Not William. Williams is doing well. We'll let him continue <laughs> flying. You, bet. you bastard. In before all complications. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Daring. Con. I'm going to use our point of momentum. GM, give yourself two more points of threat as well. All righty. You have no applicable uh, uh, value in this case. Oh, you know that's a good, that's a good catch. I probably do. Um, let's see. Uh, I feel like Williams is feeling rather brash after two successful time jumps. Uh, so, GM, if I could, uh, I would like to tap my uh, my value. Flair is the difference between artistry and mere competence. To see if I can shave us a few extra minutes. Uh, or as much time as I can to, to help this species by sort of flying by the seat of my pants. I will certainly allow it. Right. So I'll use that to, to give us the uh, two successes right off the bat. And I assume uh, Helm operations would apply here? Most definitely. All right, so that's three successes plus two for my uh, point of determination uh, for a total of five. Total of five, which means you get uh, one momentum. <laughs> and yeah, what you do is as the Nalor and the Sphere trek on ahead through the conduit, you just oh so subtly begin to shift the Fenrir off to the right until you make contact with the uh, sort of uh, barrier between real space and transwarp. And there's almost... I wouldn't call it a violent transition, but there's definitely some shaking as you are thrown out into real space. And when you do, you arrive precisely where you are meant to uh, at the set of coordinates Vassar did send you or did send himself. And what you find is the following situation, which I will describe in a moment. So for those who can't see the stream, uh, what's going oh, on good. is a Borg sphere is currently attacking an unknown alien vessel. Uh, you are guessing that this is likely species 0973, and they are reading that their power is falling and that their shields have almost collapsed. Okay. 
We still got the torpedoes, right? You do. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. <laughs> um. Okay, so we're, I guess, going to try and hail this the ship that's losing power. Okay. Maybe so. attempt to warn the Borg off first. Warn the if, Borg? No, I mean, like you have know, one of like, thirteen contact the Borg and be like, "Hey, plan doesn't work. Fuck off." Yeah, we could do that. Let's do that. Well, he did not he seem won't. he did not seem very cooperative when we were saying that we wanted to stop this from happening. Right. Maybe he will his his mind will change in the moment because he's not actually a Borg, and <laughs> because I think he is, but. It's a weird combination of things that I think is happening with him. Okay, but maybe he will change his mind because now he's in the moment. He's the cause and effect of his actions. So, you remember how you had two complications? Yeah. Yes. Now that you one. check the brig, <clears throat> one of 13 is no longer there. Uh, <laughs> this fucking guy. Um... um. Security, please. Yeah. And what I would say uh, is when you uh, <laughs> when you scan the entire ship, uh, one of 13, there is no sign of him. Uh, he's not aboard anymore, Captain. What? All right, we just need to help, Captain. Okay. Um, okay. Red, red alert. Red alert. And lock torpedoes. On the board sphere. All right. So, just so you know, firing torpedoes does immediately give me one threat. Uh, but if you wish to literally fire a salvo, uh, that is three threat. But the advantage is you get additional dice as damage, and you can do what is essentially a spread effect, which means that it will hit even harder. Yeah, but we don't want to waste all of those torpedoes. Correct, yes. A salvo would use all of your torpedoes. Let's just do the one. Can we do one can we do one tra one uh Trans transphasic the with the quantums? I would allow like, it, mix yeah. them in or okay. You said that they were gonna be the same. You know? Um let's say were, that uh, rule wise they're the same, but remember they also disable the regenerative systems. Um Actually, on that, can I pull a page out of Mithrin's book? What's your thinking? Can I transport a, t a transphasic torpedo, like, I don't know, into their main hub? I think, <laughs> I think it is. We did it before. Yeah, I was going to say it is possible. Yes. It's really fucking hard, but we did it before. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You tell me which would you guys like to do. We would have to know their shield resonance in order to beam through. I think we just need to fire. So I just want to make sure I say we have shields up mm -hmm. and red alert before we continue. <laughs> so, yeah. Um. So I would rather just fire the torpedo. We're not going to mess around. Alrighty. So, Williams, I believe this falls to you. This is going to be a control security, a difficulty of three, and the Fenrir will assist you with a weapon security. Cool. Um, so I have um, the um, augmented attribute control mm -hmm. uh, now, so that will increase my complication range for this, but okay. it'll, give me, it'll give me a free success at the very least. So, yeah, plus... Security uh, with a 2d20. And I put the focus. Wow, four successes. Uh, someone wants to grab the ship. Weapon security? Yep. It always has a focus. All right, so you get a momentum. All right, so nice. challenge dice wise, you are rolling a total of, I believe it is seven challenge dice. Seven it is. Eight. On the sheet, you have uh, quantums is eight. Uh, no. CD. If it's eight, it's eight. eight That's right, because photons are three and quantums are four. 
Uh, All right, so that is eight damage at the um, moment. Would you like to re-roll any spend, of that? Yeah, I'd like to spend a point of momentum to re-roll three of those challenge dice. Okay. Okay, so that is a total of, I can math, 12. Uh, what would you like to do in terms of your remaining momentum? Would you like to get rid of resistance, keep it? Um... Yeah, I would like to use the uh, use the remaining momentum to acquire um, penetration. Okay. So, uh, spending your momentum to get rid of the resistance of the sphere, what happens is, as Williams, you fire out uh, a torpedo, and the transphasic torpedo is a bluish yellow light that streaks through space, slams into the Borg sphere, and causes a cascading chain reaction across the surface of the sphere, effectively knocking it offline, but not completely destroyed. So it's it's not active anymore, but given enough time, it is possible that they could regenerate. Right, uh... We should communicate with the other ship and see if we can't transport the survivors off as quickly as possible and get out of here. Yeah. Clock's ticking. So actually, we're going to try, oh, go try to hail the other ship. Are they hailing us? I was going to say, they are actually hailing you. Okay, on screen. So appearing on screen is a interesting alien uh, in that they don't necessarily have humanoid features. Uh, if I had to qualify them, they are like if you took a, uh, a dolphin and mixed it with a Zindi reptilian... So you have this sort of weird fusion between uh, dolphin-like features and sort of uh, reptilian scaling. Uh, maybe imagine a uh, maybe if you were familiar with Dragonborn in uh, in uh, D and D, um, <laughs> except that they are not traditionally humanoid shape. Like their face is maybe Dragonborn-ish. Mm -hmm. um, their body is a strange amalgamation of spider. And dolphin again, so there's like flippers and fins, there's like legs, spider legs. Um, it's a very confusing sight. Like this this looks like someone took a bunch of species, cobbled them together, and created a chimera, if you will. Um, but the Universal Translator is able to translate their language, and this individual, such as they are, says, I, I don't know who you are or what you want, but you, you have saved us. Please help us get out of here. Uh, Spree will say, I'm Captain Briar Chaletta of the USS Fenrir. I'm here from the Federation, and they probably don't know what that is. Probably Actually, not. You know. Well, uh, I'm just going to say it anyway. And um, I'm not sure if I want to transport them off or just destroy the forks here. But our shields are up, so we can't, and their shields look like they're up, too. Hmm. And I don't want to drop chance. our shields. <laughs> There's a good chance the sphere's sensor readings are known by the collective. If we let the ship go, they will probably send reinforcements. Yeah. And regardless, with their transport technology, they can outrun us very easily. Yeah. Um. So Brie will say, as your life support functioning? Uh, it is, yes. We've lost main engines, but we do have secondary backups currently running. Uh, my apologies. My name is uh, Zanad of the Staka. And I will put those in chat so that uh, you know what they are. So Zanad, Zanad. and the Staka. Well, I'm sad we had to meet under these circumstances, Zanad, but uh, we'll do what we can to get you out of here. And then we'll resume com combat. Okay. So actually, combat-wise, I mean, Borg Sphere's just sitting there at the moment. Yeah, I want to fire more. Okay. Like, fire it well, <laughs> is basically what she will say. Right. Full spread of torpedoes. All right. So I would say don't even roll for this. I've got plenty of threat, and I don't need more. So, yeah, if you <laughs> want to blow up this sphere, you can blow up this sphere. I want to do it. 
All right. All right. So you turn the Borg sphere into Swiss cheese as you fire quantum after quantum into it. And there's a nice, pretty explosion in the backdrop of space as the Borg sphere is turned into slag. Yeah. Um, Matic would like to requisition some of the uh, Borg bodies. Yeah, that that can't go to, wrong. To, to... <laughs> wow. To what end, Commander? Um, I mean, I we need to eventually get around to uh, rebuilding. Um, hail. Um, I don't see why we can't give technology. him. I don't see why we can't give him some upgrades. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah, I, mean, uh, I mean, I could, I could cite the numerous historical instances in which incorporating port technology but I, I, I won't it's your show it's up to and the captain I mean, though captain I mean it's up to you no oh thank god <laughs> god How I believe I... that is what you call a no brainer mm -hmm. <laughs> So, um, I like to open up the channel to the ship. Mm -hmm. um, and sorry, before we do that, oh, okay. uh, I don't mean to interrupt or anything, uh, but um, Commander Vassar, Commander Lee, can you run a, a long range sensor scan to determine if there are any other board vessels in the area? Uh, wise precaution, Commander. Uh, do you want to handle that? I will access the ship sensor array through my neural interface and uh, conduct a long range scan. All right, reason science assisted by the ship sensor science. The difficulty after accounting for advanced sensor suites is a grand total of a two. Don't have any cool scanning things to give me bonuses here. Now, someone wants to grab the ship while he's doing that. Uh, sensor science. I got that. Now, because he does have a neural link, the ship die can be re rolled. Go ahead. And that's enough. Two successes. I have good news and bad news. Which would you like first? Bad news. Bad news, <laughs> Bad news <clears throat> is that there are Borg in the vicinity. They're not headed in your direction, but again, given transwarp and other capabilities of the Borg, they might be able to catch up to you. Uh, the good news is that on extremely long-range sensors, you are not detecting the Nalore, which is a good thing, because if you were detecting the Nalore, it would mean that uh, they were thrown out of the transwarp conduit, which means maybe they still can do plan A, even if plan B fails here. Okay. Um, should we scan the area for uh, Boronite just to see if it was on the uh, board ship or if... Uh... I tell you what, if you give me one threat, I will give you an answer, and you may or may not like the answer, but it would make sense thematically. Any give objections? Threat. Nah, give one, it to him. All right, is, this, threat. is this threat just to determine whether there was Boronite on the Borg ship, or if there's Boronite in the area surrounding us, including the other ship? Including the other ship and in the area, yes. And But I would say... I mean, this ship better not be made of Boronite. The ship is made of board nine. Son of a bitch. Wow, they really. Well, I should say really it's not pure boronite. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not pure boronite. It's an alloy, but they have enough stores of regular boronite that this ship is a literal gold mine for the Borg. So, oh my god. Okay, so we have to destroy this ship. Which means we have to explain to them what's going on and then transport them and then bring them somewhere safe, far away. Uh, I mean, if we're talking about safety and distance, 
we could take them back to the Federation. They would certainly be granted amnesty and citizenship. Mm-hmm. But would also... so it would it would the, the Omega protocol would supersede the decision to bring them back. Like that would be within our purview to do that. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Commander Rast, did you tell Bree? when the Federation, like, aren't they important to the Federation later on? So we have to save them? It, we were, you know, the way I put it was that we were just told that we need to save them. We could offer them asylum. Um, I agree. I'm curious as the aspect of if they are supposedly the last of their species, what are they doing? Yeah, I'm just going to ask them that. And what happened to their species? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you asked Staka this, and I, I imagine you've just muted comms, like you've kept the channel open this entire yeah. time. Yeah. Um, so you ask, you ask Zanad, and Zanad says, uh, our species uh, conducted a great experiment to enhance our hulls of our ship, and in the process we, we destroyed our, our world inadvertently. Uh, as far as I'm aware, we are the, the only ship that made it out in time. How sure are you that you're the only ship? Uh, when we attempted to go back to our planet, we encountered a massive subspace anomaly that prevented any and all transit. It is my belief that if anyone was trapped inside or else survived, they have perished or become trapped themselves. So they didn't even know on themselves. How, how long ago was this? This was approximately one month ago. Maddox will just kind of look at the captain like, I mean, <laughs> if we prevent them from using it, then they won't be here for the Borg to then ta- capture. That will not yeah, well, them. really well, do save like an entire species and keep like. Well, that's true. Day? I mean, well, uh, that's so true. She... It's it's uh, it would give the Borg an entire civilization worth of individuals to assimilate. Not if we and, don't allow them to, not if we tell them, hey, messing with this stuff? No, no. Bad dolphin people. This, what may, are we be encounter, <laughs> this may be the encounter that brings them into the Federation to achieve their importance in the first place. If we bring them in and with an offer of asylum, they can rebuild in the Alpha Quadrant, protected from the Borg. How many of them are on this ship? Is this like a colony ship? Is this like a scout ship? Yeah, so I guess I should have really explained what their ship looks like. So their ship is like three long spindles that are connected by a V-wing. And Mm -hmm. it's about the size of a New Orleans class, which means mechanically it's a scale four. And uh, if you were to ask Sanad how many of your people are aboard, uh, they would tell you approximately 150. Okay. Uh, Bree says to what's his name again? Zanat. Zanat. Sorry, I had it written down. Okay. Uh, she says to Zanat, "You're surrounded by Borg in this space. They don't know you're here yet. We can transport you to safety." However, we will have to destroy your ship because your ship is made of the material that they're after. Not only that, but they're after your knowledge as well. This ship is all we have. Is there no other way? There technically You know what happened to your planet? Yes. That will happen again if they get a hold of the ore your ship is made up on a much larger scale so it is you're saying it would be used as a weapon yes roll me or a, an experiment uh, that goes wrong roll me a presence command please difficulty of three 
And I am going to make the complication range a 18 to 20. Right. Can I spend momentum? I don't believe you Do have, we have any at the moment. Oh, now we're out. Okay. Um, composure? Do you have persuasion? No. Yeah, no, no, no help for composure, unfortunately. Okay, here we go. Two successes with command with your uh, augmented presence. That's three successes. Oh, okay. So okay. I'm gonna let you succeed at cost. Uh, so I'm gonna take two threat. But uh, the good news is that uh, Zanad does not decide that he needs to self destruct, and instead says. Very well. I will tell my people to prepare for the journey. Uh, please let us know when you are ready to bring us aboard. Let uh, us know when you are ready. Understood. And the channel cuts. So we cut back to the bridge. Do we know if they have any special requirements for life support? Uh, they would have sent over uh, specifications as part of that transmission, and okay. they should be able to survive a Class M, no problem. Brass is going to organize uh, work details to convert uh, some cargo area into a place for them to at least have temporary pl uh, place to be. Okay. So for sake of argument, let's say that the uh, evacuation is going to go off without a hitch. But my question is, what are you doing with their vessel once they're all aboard? We're going to um, put our heads together and figure out a safe way to settle the ship and destroy. If I may, we it. could simply tractor it into the nearby sun. That is, that's what I was going to suggest. You read my well. mind, Lee. So wait, how are we getting back? Yeah, I was waiting for someone to realize that. How are you getting back? Uh, if I may, Captain, mm -hmm. it's possible that some transwarp coils remain at least partially intact or not completely fused on the board wreckage. We could investigate it. And if not, we might try to pirate a uh, transwarp coil from another one of the nearby board vessels. Ooh. That I like would be difficult more more. to fit. <laughs> <laughs> you said you were going to balance Matic. <laughs> I feel as well, if we I should rescind that suggestion. No, um, we, we have to get hmm. home somehow. I mean, anyone else got any ideas? I mean, it'd be a very strange way of doing things, but oh, this is going to be really fucking... So, whenever we return home, Instead of sending the packet of information that we originally sent, we would adjust it to have it go to, we would go and save their planet and prevent it from exploding. Because the planet never exploded, then the ship wouldn't be here, then the board would have never gotten access to it. So then we would eliminate a predestination paradox by creating a predestination paradox. So you're saying we just Voyager? That would not that may only stave off the destruction of their planet for another experiment gone wrong. And we have no idea how we might account for the Borg's involvement. They might uncover the entire planet. Who knows what experiments they could conduct if they actually had the resources of an entire empire. And the population size that is currently on the ship will... <sighs> will meet the necessity for procreation while combating inbreeding, so we could take them. Also, this is something I've never personally understood, and this is this is Maddie speaking in character. Why do we always, like, requisition a cargo deck? Why don't we ever just turn a holodeck into, like, a refugee camp? Wouldn't that just be easier? Well, there's still size limitations. What if the power goes out? Well, and just power because, goes out, just we because have the holodeck, issues, then... it just because the holodeck can look tremendous, it's still got a finite amount of space within it. Mm -hmm. 
And to be fair, Starfleet, for some reason, does allow its holodecks to operate on an independent power grid from the warp core. So even if we lost the, well, all three warp cores on board the Fenrir, the holodeck would still work for some reason. Mm. <laughs> so assuming we could find like a transwarp module or whatever from the wreckage, mm -hmm. I mean, we would have to, it would be very difficult to like leak that up to our ship. How long would it take us to get from where we are now to where our original rendezvous point would have been? I don't like the idea of leaving the other ship here anyway. Um, a maximum warp, it's about a day. If we were to do QSD, probably about half that time. If nah, I remember QSD, QSD, you probably would get there within 10 minutes, 30 <laughs> minutes. QSD is real fast. Oh. So we could QSD there, get there within 10 to probably get there within half an hour. Um, Drag the species we just tried to keep from the Borg into the Borg. Yeah. The interesting Luau. thing is because we just uh, we more check uh Matic wants to really wants to uh check the signature of the ship we just blew up with the ship that we've been dealing with. Okay. Uh it is actually the very same signature. Okay, so we just blew up the ship that comes back in time to contact us. <laughs> How are we here then? So at some point the timeline should have reset. However, it hasn't. So we didn't. Did we even do anything? What the hell? Welcome to uh, time travel paradox, Captain. Well, I don't understand. <laughs> what's the okay. range of What's the range of communications? Can we communicate with the other ship? Uh, yeah, you can communicate with the other ship if you. Do you mean the Nalor, or do you mean? Yeah, we should we should see what kind of situation the Lenore is in. Okay, so you raise the Nalor, and appearing on the view screen is Captain Sin, and uh, Captain Sin says, uh, "Captain Archuleta, good to see you. Uh, I happen to note you aren't here with us. Did something go wrong during transit?" gonna say um no we split off i see and might i assume that this is your fabled plan b this might have been plan a all along hmm Sounds like a Matic thing to do. Very well. I am reporting that we have arrived at Unimatrix 09. Uh, simply put, there's a lot of Borg here. Uh, but the good news, if you're able to make it back to us safely, uh, I've already had my engineering squad uh, calculate which of the transwarp conduits we need to take back to get to where we originally came from. All right. Be there soon. <laughs> Let's go. Be right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> TTFN. Okay, but um, also we gotta destroy this ship, this other ship. And uh, Captain, I may have an idea about that. Okay. Um, we have what two transphasic torpedoes left? You have two, yes. We could rig them to the to this ship's to the ship's warp uh, warp core. Get it kind of close to the centralization unit of their unimatrix, and set a timer i mean weren't we weren't we ordered to avoid starting a new conflict with the borg we didn't start anything it just ha they it just happened the warp core just happened to blow up uh, let's not i don't think that's a prudent idea let's not kick the hornet's nest certainly the captain of their ship has a self-destruct but even still even if it does self-destruct we still have to find a way to poison the boronite. That could still be salvaged. We would have to... Into the sun. Mm -hmm. Right, Commander Lee? That would be my recommendation. Do I think that that would actually uh, render the boronite irrecoverable? Yeah, if you throw it into a sun, they aren't getting it back. Okay. Is there a sun nearby? Or you... There's one near enough nearby that you could throw it in, no problem. Okay. 
sure. and um, oh, it's so sad. <clears throat> but we can't risk bringing not only boronite, but also the knowledge of how to use boronite properly back to the war the board are. So we have to do that. And to that end, uh, Captain, maybe the engineering and sciences divisions could uh, put their heads together to find a way to mask the the biosignatures uh, of the Staka while they're aboard. Yeah, let's do that. Great idea. All right. If we can. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Okay. And yeah, uh, we are sort of uh, at that point where I do a temperature check. Uh, I think there's maybe about an hour and 30 minutes left in the adventure, but I know we have a hard stop coming up in about 30 minutes. So would you all like to stop here and we make this a two-parter maybe? Yeah, I think so. I'm fine with, fine that. with that. Yeah. Okay, then this is where we will draw this session to a close and we will pick up here next week. Uh, yeah. Thank you all for watching and playing. Hopefully you had a good time. I know temporal stuff is very confusing and I apologize if I did not explain it well. Uh, but this is where I'm going to end the stream. So Twitch, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much and see you later. Bye stream. Thank you, thank you. Yes.